<coughs> Nisargika means uncreated, natural. And so, or that which is coming on from the beginning this time. Nisargika also means anadi. This doesn't have an adi. This adhyasa does not have a beginning at all. <coughs> Pratyagatmani hetu hetu madbhavena adhyasa pravaha anadhi ityartaha. Nisargika means anadhi. What is anadhi? Adhyasa anadhi. Loka nisargika ha loka vyavara ha. Loka vyavara means the notion that I am a loka, that I am an individual. That notion is what? Nisargika ha. Is beginningless. So pratyagatmani upon the self. Hetu hetu madbhavena. Hetu means cause. Hetu means mean defect. Adhyasa pravaha anadhi. And so this adhyasa pravaha. In the past was also I took myself to the body, which was the cause for taking myself to the body in this birth also. <coughs> Nanu pravahasya avastutvat adhyasa vyaktiram saditvat kathamanaditva medichet. But what happens is adhyasa in this life. Like this ahankara etc. that I have, or this body is something that is born here. This body has a beginning, and therefore identification with this body also has a beginning. So, adhyasa, each adhyasa, for example, adhyasa taking place in this life, is has a beginning. Each adhyasa has a beginning. In the past birth also, that was a unique body. Identification with that also had a beginning with the, with the birth of that body. This body is a new body. The adhyasa identification with this body has also beginning with the beginning or birth of this body. So each adhyasa has a beginning. Each adhyasa is what? Sadi. Then how do you say that? There is anaditma of the adhyasa. Pravahasya avastutva. Pravaha is not a substance or an entity. Pravaha is a concept actually. So, pravaha se avastutvat, adhyasa vyaktinam saditvat. Each adhyasa has a beginning. <coughs> Meaning, identification with this body has a beginning because body has a beginning. <coughs> so, adhyasa vyakti, vyakti means here an individual adhyasa. Every adhyasa has a beginning. So, when every adhyasa has a beginning, katham anaditvamidhi, how do you say that this adhyasa is anadit? Adhyasa pravaha means adhyasa. Pravaha is not a, another substance. So adhyasa is a beginningless. How do you say that? When each adhyasa has a beginning. Uchyate adhyasatva avachinna vyaktina madhye anyatamaya vyaktya vina anadikalasya avartanam karya anaditvam iti angikara. So adhyasatva avachinna vyaktina. This individual adhyasa, which possesses the nature of being adhyasa. So adhyasatya, adhyasatva, avachinna, vyakti means adhyasa. So adhyasa which is possessed of the quality of being adhyasa. So each adhyasa or identification with each body has madhye, anyatamaya, vyaktya, vina. Anyatam means at least one of them must be there at any time. The idea is that even though this particular adhyasa, or identification with this body was not there before hundred years. But then at that time some other adhyasa was there. So some one or the other adhyasa is invariably there. Each adhyasa has a beginning and an end. But then one or the other adhyasa is always there. Therefore some body or other always Atma must be associated with some body or the other. Therefore it's an astral body they call it. When this body, this subtle body lives here, then it also gathers some kind of a Another kind of body, then it goes to another loka. In Pitru loka, some other kind of body is there. With that, that jiva enjoys the, the bhoga Pitru loka. If you go to Naraka also, you must have a special kind of body. Otherwise, you cannot enjoy, I mean, experience dukkha also. For experiencing sukha dukkha, the subtle body must be there, and the gross body, which becomes the ayatanam, that also must be there. And so, Atma is associated with one or the other body at any time. Even the individual Adhyasa has a beginning and an end. Anyatamaya, at any given point in time, one or the other Adhyasa must always be there. Vyaktya vina, anadi kala se avartanam, otherwise, that anadi kala cannot be there. So, kala itself is beginningless. 
and in the beginning this time that some some adhyas or other is always there and therefore pravaham tyat there is anani pravahatvam like the ganges is anani pravaha every moment that body of water keeps on changing so we say that the ganges water has come up to here what water the water i saw before here has already become has perhaps <laughs> become cloud you know and again early rain but we still feel that the same ganges is going on on every moment it is changing because there is a continuity so even though each vyakti keeps on changing there is a continuity and therefore this adhyasa is anadi pravahatvam <coughs> so karya anaditvam iti angikara even though karya has a sari the karya pravaha is going on therefore we say that adhyasa is karya avidya is karanam so adhyasa also is anadi avidya is anadi adhyasa also is एतेन कारण अभावाद विकल्प है निरस्त है सी दिस डिस्कशन स्टार्टेड विद दिस क्वेश्चन मैंने पूर्व पक्षी सेड दैट दिस इज नो सामग्री फॉर अभ्यास बाय सेइंग दैट आत्मा एंड अनात्मा आर टोटली डिफरेंट एंटिटीज फॉर सामग्री सादृश्य इज रिक्वायर्ड सो सम सिमिलरिटी इज रिक्वायर्ड अपॉन द रोप वी कैन सुपर इंपोज इट्स नेक नॉट एन एलिफेंट Nobody ever superimposes elephant upon a rope. Why? Because there is no similarity between rope and elephant. But rope can, snake can be superimposed upon the rope because there is similarity. Sadrushyam is there. There is no sadrushyam between atma and anatma because both are totally opposed, opposite entities. One is para, one is pratyek. So samagri is not there. Samskara is another samagri. But then, for samskara, for the snake to be superimposed, you must have experienced a real snake in the past. Or when the samskara is left in your mind, and then you can see the snake now. But for you to experience bondage now, was there a real bondage in the past? Was there a real sam- samsara in the past? Or when the samskara is carried now, and you are superimposing samsara? <coughs> no. So samskara also is not there. And there were none of the samag, whatever no samagri that is required for abhyasa is found to be there. That's why I said the question was. When you say that adhyasa cannot be there, is it because it is not logical, or is it because it cannot be experienced, or is it because the samagri or the, the required causes for adhyasa are not there? We also accepted that it doesn't make sense that adhyasa is there, but we cannot say that adhyasa is not experienced. Abhanam is not there. Adhyasa abhanam is there because everyone experiences agnyoham, manusyoham. Now this is a matter of experience. And we cannot disregard that. <coughs> Third was karana abhavadva. You say that adhyasa is not there because karana is not there. The necessary conditions which are required for adhyasa to take place, they are not there. We are now proving that karana is there. So first karana is what samskara. So we say that there is samskara of the adhyasa that we are carrying on forward from the past. Like the accountants always carry forward the balance, so also they carry forward the adhyas of the past. That is the samagri we are bringing with ourselves, and so samskara, which is one of the requirements for adhyas, is there. So karan abhava is not there. <coughs> That's why the Upanishads say there is karan abhava adhi kalpa. Kalpa means vikalpa. This third vikalpa, that karan abhava, absence of karanam, is not there. Samskara, which is required for Swaradhyasa, is there Nanadi Pravaha in the form of the beginningless Pravaha. Samskara se nimitta se naisargya padena uktatva. Naisargya koyam loka vyavahar hai. That naisargya means beginningless. That samskara becomes nimitta. So there also, for committing the error of the snake instead of the rope, this samskara of the snake become the nimitta. Nimitta means they become instrumental for the superimposition of snake. Here also, the samskara of taking this anatma to be atma and upon atma superimposing the anatma, the dharma of the anatma, that becomes the nimitta or the cause for the samskara in the present birth. So Vashikara does not use the word samskara. But when Vashyakara says Naisargya, that means samskara is implied that when something is beginningless, 
Everyone knows that the body does not have a beginning. Still there is something beginningless. What? The samskara pravaha is beginningless. So why the word nisargika, Mahashakara indicates the some beginninglessness of samskara, which is the cause for adhyasa. <coughs> But important thing was they say samskara which means what? Puro pramajanya samskara. For you to commit the error of a snake, you must have seen as a real snake. So the samskaras or impressions of the knowledge, puro pramajanya. You must have seen a real snake, which must have left samskara in your mind. You must have seen a, a real silver, and samskara of the silver must be in your mind. Similarly also you must have seen a real bondage, then samskaras can make you superimpose the false bondage. So we say that not only samskaras must be there, but purva pramajanya samskara, meaning samskaras of a real entity must be there. So that condition is not satisfied. You do claim that there is beginning where samskara, prava is there, but at no time have you ever experienced a real bondage and therefore because of the real bondage you experience, bondage becomes real. Then bondage is never real. So, pura pramajanya samskara, meaning that samskara must be created from the earlier experience of a real entity, that condition is not satisfied. Therefore, how do you say that? The adhyan samagri is. So, nacha pura pramajanya eva samskara hetu hiti vacham. We say that it is not necessary that, sams- that all we say samskara must be there. Whether samskara is born of some real or unreal doesn't matter. They give different kind of illustration. Suppose there is a magician and he produces a snake before you, you know. What snake? Just a magical snake and you see that. And that also leaves impression in your mind. And that can become the cause for superimposing snake where there is a rope. So samskara of the snake are created not from the knowledge of real snake, just knowledge of snake, whether the snake is real or not. So we are saying that samskara is necessary, but not necessarily samskara born of a real entity. Only samskara anubhava is required. Experience of snake is required, but not necessarily experience of real snake. Nacha purva pramajanya eva samskara hetu irivacham. You should not say that, you should not insist that samskara must necessarily born of the prior true knowledge. Lagavena. <coughs> Purva Anubhavajanya Samskara Se Hetu Tvar. All we are saying is, not, not Yathartha Anubhava, just Anubhava. Prama means what? Yathartha Anubhava. Experience of a thing as it is. We say that Yathartha Pada is not necessary, Anubhava Pada. Make it simpler. So Lagava means brevity. You insist that the Samskara must be from the Yathartha Anubhava. Prama means Yathartha Anubhava. We say that, that Yathartha Pada is not necessary, just Anubhava. <coughs> says the Purana in the third line, Karanata avacchedaka koto yathartha pada vishyastha prama padam naniveshade yadu brahma prama sadharana anuva padam naniveshade Lagava. Lagava means you make it simpler or brief. So Karanata avacchedaka koto <coughs> So that which possesses this Karanata means Karanam. In the Karanam yathartha pada vishyastha prama padam naniveshade Prama means yathartha anubhava. That yathartha, that, that word is not necessary. Kintu brahma prama sadharana anubhava niveshade. Anubhava means experience is common to both brahma and prama. Experience can be of a real snake or experience can be of a true snake or, or, or a false snake. But experience of a snake, not necessarily experience of a real snake. Experience of a snake is enough. Also, also, experience of a bondage is enough. <coughs> it need not be a real bondage. That's what we are saying. <coughs> so, pura pramajanya samskara, no. Purva anubhavajanya samskara. Where prama means yasartha anubhava. So, purva yasartha anubhavajanya samskara. That long definition is not necessary. Purva anubhavajanya samskara. That is enough. Idea is that all you must have the past notion that I am dukhi. That's enough to make you dukhi. That's all. So, it's not necessary that you must be really dukhi. Or, you must be really samsara. Not necessary. 
that lingering on, what do you call, you know, the, uh, what do they call it, uh, <coughs> the uh, hangover, you know, hangover with samskara is there, that's all. So that hangover is there, dukhi, dukhi, and that hangover continues there. <coughs> So, Lagavena, Purva, Anubhavajanya Samskara, Sehe Putwad. Never, it is enough that some kind of Anubhava is there of the Purva Samskara. They need not be the Anubhava of a real entity. <coughs> Ataha, Purva Adhyasa Janya Samskara, Astiti Siddham. It is proven that Purva Adhyasa Janya Samskara, that there is Adhyasa in this life, shows that there must be a Samskara of the Adhyasa. That's all. Otherwise, adhyasa in this life could not have been there. Ataha purva adhyasa jinya samskara. Not purva yathartha adhyasa jinya samskara. Purva adhyasa jinya samskara. Asti in the siddham. That there is why everyone brings with him or her the samskara of adhyasa. Meaning, committing the error of taking myself to be a jiva. Committing the error of taking this body to be atma. These samskaras are going on from the, from the earlier. From this earlier. Ultimately, how early? But Swami, when the first time this Adhyasa took place, that time there was no samskara. For this body, of course, this samskara is there for the past one. Past body, the samskara is there of the previous one. But when the first time Adhyasa took place, at that time, what samskara was there? So he said, there is no first time at all. It's just going on, you know. And so this pravaha, it's, 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 it's not something that you can imagine. Beginningless is not something that the intellect can imagine. And therefore this problem is there. But nor can you imagine the first also. For you to imagine first, you must imagine a condition existing before first, which also we cannot imagine. And so suppose you imagine first creation, then you must imagine non-existence of creation, which you cannot imagine also. Because non-existence also is imagined as reference to existence. If you want to exist, imagine non-existent part, how do you imagine? You first imagine part and then remove it from your mind. You cannot imagine non-existence. Non-existence is not there. All we are saying is there is no such thing as non-existence. This fellow has imagined this entity. They imagine abhava and then all kinds of, they, they decorate the abhava. By calling anyonya abhava, atyanda abhava, this abhava, purva, pradhum abhava, prag abhava. All kinds of names you give and make such a big structure and give some reality. There is no abhava at all. In that sense, because you cannot imagine abhava. Abhava can never become the object of a knowledge. Some bhava, the bhava always is a reference to some bhava. And therefore, even that also, is the first you cannot imagine. There is no such thing as first. There is only what? A continuity. Of course, in the dream also. <laughs> Because the, the answer is simple. Because the whole thing is false. Had the world been real, then there would have been first or second. It is not real, and what is not real, we are not obliged to explain the first or second. If it is real, then there is no that. After all, this snake is there, then you know, what is, it, what is the species of this snake? We are not obliged to explain you all that, because it's an imaginary snake. So don't bother much about it. There is some, up to some point you can be bothered with it. How much more? And so, <coughs> Ataha, Purva. So there is no first Adhyasa, understand? Because before first Adhyasa must be knowledge. And then the knowledge must be followed by ignorance. So that cannot happen. And therefore there is no first Adhyasa. It is beginningless. <coughs> so here, Naisargi Kaha, this word is explained. Satyanade Mithuni Kritya, that is explained by showing that one entity is real, other entity is unreal. Naisargika shows that there is samskara there, which is the cause of nimitta for the adhyasa. <coughs> then, adhyasa se upadana maha. What is the reason for adhyasa? Upadana means material cause. What is it that makes up this adhyasa? Why adhyasa is there? Mithya jnana nimitta hai, Bhashyakara says. Mithya jnana nimitta hai. <coughs> now what happens is, if you, if Bhashyakara just said, Ajnana Nimitta, then also we are all right. Or Mithya Jnana means Brahma. Jnana means real knowledge, true knowledge. Mithya Jnana means false knowledge or Brahma. So Brahma Nimitta, also it could have been said. Or Ajnana, ignorance, 
ಯಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಅವನ ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಸೋಸ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಇಸ್ ಬಟ್ ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ಟೀಕಾಕಾರ ಅಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಫರ್ ದರ್ ದ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿವರಣ ಅಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಫರ್ ಪಂಚಪಾಲಿಕಾಕಾರ ಸೊ ಪದ್ಮಪಾಲಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಜ್ಞಾನ ದೀಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ that all is supposed to be elided there so mithya agnyan nimitta why is it so says purnanandya says here in the eighth line tatra agnyanam iti ukte gnyan abhava matram iti uktam syat if we say agnyan nimitta there are those nayayikas who say that agnyanam is gnyan abhava absence of gnyan is called agnyanam so there would have been perhaps a possibility of misinterpretation where someone may think that there is absence of jnanam that kind of agnyanam is as now and so agnyanam is not adequate so agnyanam nimitta vashakara did not say then mithya devte mithya jnanam if you are said bhranti jnanam is syad in that case bhranti jnanam alone so this is a product of bhranti that also is not because bhranti also must be caused by something ignorance tat ubhaya vyavrutya ಸ್ವಾಭಿಮತಾರ್ಥ ಸಿದ್ಧ ಕರ್ಮಧಾರ ಸಮಾಸ ನಿತ್ಪಾದಯತಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ತಜ್ಞಾನ ದಟ್ ವಾಸು ಕೂಡ ಮೀನ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಚಜ್ಞಾನ ಚ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಬಟ್ ನೋ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಿ ಟೀಕಾಕಾರ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಚತ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ಕರ್ಮಧಾರ ಸಮಾಸ ವೆರ್ ಬೋಧ್ ದಿ ಪದಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ರಾಮಿನ್ ಸಿ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಚತ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾಟ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ್ವಂದ್ವ ಸಮಾಸ mithya as well as agnana <coughs> so both of them qualify the 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 uh, the substantive you know so it is uh, mithya adhyasa so mithya nimitta adhyasa and agnana nimitta adhyasa <coughs> therefore ratna prabha says mithya cha tat agnanam cha mithya agnanam that is mithya what is the nimitta what's the cause of the adhyasa cause is mithya as well as ignorance or ignorance which is mithya that becomes the cause for the adhyasa <coughs> there is a reason because mithya also has something to convey agnanam also has something to convey so since both of these words convey something then mithya agnanam conveys very clearly the cause for adhyasa <coughs> mithya agnyana nimitta there are now there are two causes nimitta karanam upadana karanam so upadana karanam is samavaya karanam material cause place the upadana karanam for pot and the pot maker is nimitta karanam pot maker or the wheel etc are the nimitta karanam nimitta karanam does not get reflected in the karyam upadana karanam always gets reflected in karyam so wherever brahma is there ignorance is always there ignorance goes wherever brahma or error is so ignorance is upadana karanam not nimitta karanam so if agnana were just nimitta karanam then agnana would not be there in in bhanti but agnana is upadana karanam because agnana is there where bhanti is so what is intended here is that ignorance is upadana karanam so in bhranti the ignorance is definitely involved as long as bhranti is so long ignorance is definitely there only when ignorance goes bhranti will go in order to destroy the karyam you must destroy upadana karanam if you destroy that chak chak that wheel the pot will not be destroyed if you do something with that poor pot maker also pot will not be destroyed but if you take and remove the clay then one pot will be destroyed so we must know the nature of cause so we must know the upadana karana or adhyasa when you eliminate upadana karana that karyam also gets eliminated you see so to remove or eliminate adhyasa what should we do we must eliminate the upadana karana what is that agnyanam so agnyanam becomes upadana karana so when agnyanam is eliminated the bhranti or adhyasa which is the product of agnyanam also gets eliminated otherwise agnyanam goes and samsara remains if agnana merely becomes in nimitta karana then agnana goes away then bhanti remains agnana is upadana karana so 
So when Agnana is destroyed, Brahmati also gets destroyed. Therefore, that Mithya Agnana means Upadana Karanam and not Nimitta Karanam. Samskara becomes Nimitta Karanam. Samskara of the past becomes the Nimitta, instrumental for this Agnana, the Sadhya to take place. But ignorance is the Upadana Karanam. However, Bhashyakara says what? Mithya Agnana Nimitta. So therefore, this, this Adhyasa is what? Mithya Ajna, this Loka Vyavahara. This Naisargika Loka Vyavahara is what? Mithya Ajna Nimitta. He Vashyakara says Mithya Ajna Upadana. Vashyakara says what? Nimitta. So Tikakara says, even though Vashyakara says Nimitta, we should understand Upadana. Because Ajna is word Nimittam as well as Upadana. And Lagave, there are also brevity. Everyone knows that ignorance is Upadana. So you need not say the obvious. But ignorance is Nimitta also. That may not be obvious. So Bhashyakara says Nimitta. So Ajahal Lakshana. Ajnana means because Ajahal means what? You retain that Nimitta plus add something related to Nimitta Tvam, Karnam, meaning Upadana. And therefore, Mithya Ajnana Nimitta Upadana Nana Samnai Sargika Loka Vyavara. So Mithya Ajnana becomes what? Nimitta as well as Upadanam for the Adhyasa. That's why the word Nimitta is interpreted as Nimitta as well as Upadana. <coughs> if Nimitta, Upad, Nimitta were explained as Upadana, it would be Jahal Lakshana. But here Nimitta as well as Upadana means a Jahal Lakshana. Shono Dhavati, the red runs when we say, then what we say? The red horse runs. Red is retained and horse is added. So also here the nimitta is retained and upadana is added. So it is called ajahal lakshana. That's what says the uh, mithya, I mean this pranamya. So mithya jnanam anirvachaniya mithya vi arthaha. Ajahal lakshana nimitta parasya upadana vi arthaha vi ahat tad upadana hai. So nimitta means nimitta as well as upadana. So that's why Ritna Prabhupada said, Mithya cha tad ajnanam cha mithya ajnanam tan nimittam upadanam yasya saha that mithya ajnanam becomes nimitta as well as upadanam. Instrumental cause as well as material cause for which adhyasa is called uh, mithya ajnanam nimitta adhyasa. Yasya saha this loka vyavahara tan nimitta tad upadanam hai tyartha means Mithya Ajnana Nimitta, Mithya Ajnana Upadana. Mithya Ajnana becomes the Nimitta as well as Upadana for this Loka Vyavara. Because Samskara also is created from what? When we say that Samskara is a Nimitta for the Adhyasa, even Samskara is created from what? Past Adhyasa only. We is created from what? Ajnana. So Ajnana ultimately becomes what? The cause for Samskara also, Nimitta also. So Ajnana means Nimitta, as well as Upadana. That's what is being said here. <coughs> Ritna Vrasa Agnyasya Upadana Tvevi Samsvarat Atma Tattva Avarakataya Dosha Tvena Ahankar Adhyasa Kartuhu Ishwarasya Upadit Tvena Samskara Kala Karamadi Nimitta Parinamit Tvena Cha Nimitta Tvamiti Devutaitam Nimitta Padam. So in fact, Agnanam is not directly nimittam. Agnanam is nimittam indirectly because for those who become the nimitta or instrumental for adhyasa, all of them are products of agnanam. So three nimittas are given for adhyasa. Samskara, kala, karma, de, nimitta. Samskara must be there for the adhyasa to take place. Kala, karma, there are all samanya nimitta. There are nimitta are also different kinds. Everywhere time is required, everywhere karma is required. So there are sadharana nimitta and asadharana nimitta. In this case, the samskara becomes asadharana nimitta plus time, place, etc. all must be there. So all of these are also products of ignorance. And so all the different nimittas or causes that are required are all products of ignorance. <coughs> Then there must be dosha, you know. So for adhyasa to take place, dosha must be there. So three kinds of doshas are there. 
ప్రమాణ దోష ప్రమేయ దోష అండ్ ప్రమాతృ దోష ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఫార్ అ రోప్ టు మిస్టేక్ ఇన్ విస్నేక్ దర్ ఈస్ వాట్ యూ కాల్ ప్రమేయ దోష రోప్ ఈస్ వాట్ ప్రమేయ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ దర్ ఆల్సో ఇస్ సమ్ ఇన్హెరెంట్ థింగ్ ఫార్ ఇట్ సూపర్ ఇంపోజిషన్ టు టేక్ ప్లేస్ రోప్ ఆల్సో ప్లేస్ సమ్ రోల్ ఇన్ ది ఇన్ ది సూపర్ ఇంపోజిషన్ ఆఫ్ స్నేక్ వాట్ రోల్ డస్ అ రోప్ ప్లే బికాస్ రోప్ హెస్ సాదృశ్యం సిమిలారిటీ విత్ స్నేక్ రోప్ ఇస్ అ కర్వేచర్ rope is a certain length rope is a certain thinness and there were rope possesses certain characteristics which make it amenable for the superimposition of snake that is called dosha with reference to rope that rope doesn't have dosha of elephant so nobody superimposes elephant upon the rope but rope has sadrushya with reference to similarity with reference to snake so that dosha also must be there similarly there is a dosha in the fellow who sees also pramata because in his mind some problems are there he just heard about the snake and there were some fear etc is there in his mind even though you have samskar of the snake does not mean that you will see snake everywhere if you don't have suppose some fellow works in this uh, which is place what is it called uh, near in the jodhpur tekra the sundar one you know every day he handles snakes there is no fear of snake when the fear is not there it's quite possible that he won't see the snake because when there is a fear then then you are likely to see things which are not there mm-hmm. when the suspicion is there fear is there when all those internal problems are there then it superimposes things they are not there you know mm-hmm. invariably superimposition takes place because of your own problems so also the superimposition of snake also requires calls for what for some fear etc on the part of this person otherwise it would not have been there so that pramada dosha also is required otherwise would not have taken place and third is pramana dosha i see that rope but there is some problem with my eyes also mand andhakara if the eyes were very sharp there are certain eyes which can see things even in the darkness suppose i had those sharp eyes i would have spotted that rope there but there are some problems with my pramana eyes also and there are see how many when how many things are required for one abhyasa to take place first of all samskara must be there of the past if i never heard of a snake never seen a snake there is no way that i would superimpose a snake when there is a rope i have seen a snake i know what a snake is and what it does then if it stings somebody somebody can die i don't want to be stung and therefore the whenever there is a snake fear is always because i saw somebody dying or i heard that because of snake bite somebody died so with the snake is associated fear in my mind if i knew that 99% of snakes are actually not poisonous and nobody dies people die out of fear and all kinds of problems then perhaps i may not have fear of the snake there are fellows they say there is a book of some bayan that is published when swami ji was small he was not afraid of snake at all there was a river there and there was a particular spot in the river where there were many snakes and people were afraid of going there they would not swim there this boy had no problem at all he was he would uh, play there if a snake is there he could catch hold of it and throw away right away without any difficulty no fear in which case it's not that everybody has fear but when there is fear then there is likelihood so pramata dosha is there pramanam dosha is there prameya dosha is there also samskara that there of the past the experience of the snake and so all the samagri is required and of course that the object is suppose i had placed a rope myself there suppose i knew that it is rope then when i come back in the evening i am not going to make the mistake of looking at seeing it as a snake what but i know that it is rope so ignorance also is required so agnyana is required samskara that required and then also all the doshas pramana dosha prameya dosha pramatra dosha all these samagri is required for this abhyasa to take if one of them is not there abhyasa will not take place if i could see properly no problem if i had no fear at that time maybe i if i had never seen the snake no problem if i had not did not have ignorance of the rope no problem if the rope did not have sadrushya of a snake there is no problem the rope is so long 50 feet rope you know nobody is going to confuse that with the snake you know piece of rope is required you know not a very long or coil such a big coil or you know then perhaps we would spot it as as a rope only <coughs> so 
all the doshas. So this dosha is created by what? By ignorance ultimately. I is also product of ignorance. Pramar also product of ignorance. Prame also product of ignorance. The body also is product of ignorance. Jiva also product of ignorance. And the buddhi also product of ignorance. So all the dosha also are created by what? By ignorance. Even the dosha, because the nimitta of anadhyasa, that dosha itself is created by ajnana. Even the samskara becomes nimitta of anadhyasa, samskara also becomes the easy product of ajnana. <coughs> and of course ajnana. So ajnana se upadana tvevi samsvarat atma ratva avarakataya. Atma which is self shining. Avarakataya. It conceives or veils the atma which is self shining. So dosha tvena. Therefore, there is avidya dosha. That atma tattva, which is self shining, also is veiled by ignorance, and therefore, that avidya or ignorance of the atma is also product of fundamental, that our aspect of the avidya. Ahankara adhyasakartuhu ishwarasya upaditvena. <coughs> this fellow who is doing the adhyasa is what? Ishwara. Ishwara means either the individual or the Lord. Because they are ultimately one alone. So, adhya, ahankara adhyasa kardahu ishvarasya upaditvena. That very agnyana becomes upadi. That becomes upadi on account of which the ahankara, the superimposition of ahankara takes place. So, upaditvena samskara kala karmadi nimitta parinamitvena cha. Agnyana alone has transformed itself as kala, as karma, as samskara. And so all those which are the nimitta for adhyasa are also there on account of avidya alone. So in the ultimate sense, avidya becomes both the nimitta as the rupalana for his adhyasa. So nimitta tvamidhi. But that may not be clear. If Bhashyakara had said, amitya agnyana upadana, then the nimitta tvam would not have been clear to us. So Bhashyakara should have said, mitya agnyana upadana nimitta, but that would be too long. So it is said, mitya agnyana nimitta. Where the Upadhanatvam is understood and Nimittatvam is clarified. So, need not use words more than necessary. Use only the necessary words. <coughs> so, Nimittatvam is Dyotaitam, Nimittapadam, and thus there is Nimittapadam is there, there Agnyanam becomes the Nimittam of the Adhyasa also. <coughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Om Karashyata Shandasya Vaveta Ubrahmanakva Kantham Vitva Vidhyatav Tasman Mangalikal Bhav Om Atha Om Atha Om Atha Smratvat Pratye Gochara Yoho Vishaya Vishaya Noho Tamak Prakashavad Viruddha Sohava Yoho Itareitara bhavan upapattau siddhāyāṁ Tad dharmā nāma pisutarāṁ Itareitara bhavan upapattihi Ityadaha Vishasmat pratye gochare Vishayini chidātmake Yushmat Pratye Gocharasya Vishasya Tad Dharmanan Chadhyasaha Tad Viparyayena Vishayinaha Tad Dharmanan Chadhyasaha Vishay Adhyasaha Mithyed Bhavitum Yuktam Tathabe Anyon Yasmin Anyon Yat Makatam Anyon Yadharamam Sadjasya Itare Tarabi Vekena 
ಅತ್ಯಂತ ವಿವಕ್ತೋ ಧರ್ಮಧರ್ಮಿಣ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾಮಿತ್ತೃತೆ ಮಿಥುನೀಕೃತ್ಯ ಅಹಮಿದ ಮಮೇದಿ ನೈಸರ್ಗಿಕೋಯ ಲೋಕವ್ಯವಹಾರ ನೈಸರ್ಗಿಕೋಯ ಲೋಕವ್ಯವಹಾರ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ದಿಸ್ ನೋಷನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಅಭಿಮಾನ ಆನ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಲೋಕ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನ್ ಅಭಿಮಾನ ಇಸ್ ನೈಸರ್ಗಿಕ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಕಾಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಒಬ್ಟೇನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಆನ್ ದ ಪೇಜ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಾನಂದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ how one thing leads to the other how the samskara is there in the past which creates the present identification <coughs> says atmani uh, fourth line of second paragraph atmani kartrutva bhautrut dosh sambandha eva adhyasah what is adhyasah atmani kartrutva bhautrutva dosh sambandha that i am a karta bhokta this notion of kartrutva and bhoktrutva in the atma this is dosha kartrutva bhoktrutva itself is a dosha and so association of that dosha with atma meaning that i am karta i am bhokta this itself is adhyasah atra vartaman bhoktrutva adhyasah kartrutva adhyasam apekshate that i am bhokta right now an enjoyer or an experiencer of something that requires that i must have performed an action in the past because says he akartohu bhoga abhavat who is a bhokta who is the one who is enjoy or experiencer the one who has performed action in the past because the karma phala is experienced only by the one who has performed the karma so it is karta who ultimately becomes bhokta so when i find myself as a bhokta today an experience of variety of karma phalas that calls for or that requires that there must be kartrutvam in the past <coughs> because unless kartra karta is there bhokta cannot be now kartrutvam cha ragadvesha sambandha adhyasam apekshate that kartrutva that i do something now generally speaking any action it supposes again a desire desire to acquire something that is desirable or desire to get rid of something that is undesirable so these are the two kinds of activities we have or yoga and kshema desire to acquire what i do not have and desire to protect what i have or desire to avoid what i do not like desire to get rid of what i do not want so this desire is what prompts makes me a karta and this desire itself arises from the notion that something is desirable i cannot desire something unless that thing is desirable and what makes it desirable is only my notion my my own superimposition or my own notion that a given thing is desirable so what makes this object grows a desirable is i because an object is only an object but i superimpose a desirability upon an object that is called raga this is called shobhana adhyasa to superimpose something which is not there so desirability which is not there in an object is superimposed and then i want the object so that desire also that particular superimposition is called raga and similarly also what makes an object undesirable again my own mind which superimposes undesirability upon something and then doesn't want it or wants to get rid of it so this desire kartrutva the action arises because of desire desire arises from raga and dvesha so when i perform an action it presupposes some likes and dislikes so some raga dvesha is there before performance of an action so bhoktrutva presupposes kartrutva kartrutva presupposes and associates with raga and dvesha 
ragadi rahitasya kartratva abhavat. If I don't have raga or dvesha at all, there will be no desire. No desire to acquire anything, no desire to get rid of something. In which case, there will be no action proceeding from me. And so, kartratva, meaning performance of an action, presupposes raga and dvesha. Raga dvesha sambandascha puru bhoktratva apekshade. Anupabhunkte ragadi anupatte. Then, what makes me superimpose a desirability upon this object? Because of a past experience. When I experience this object, then I gained a happiness. Desirability in coffee or tea or, or anything, even a person or a situation arises from a past experience. When I met someone and I enjoyed his company and therefore I would want to have it again. I went to a place, I liked the place, I was happy, I would want to go there again. So raga also presupposes an experience. Dvesha also presupposes an experience. I did not like something, that was an experience and therefore I don't want it. So Raga Dvesha presupposes what? An experience or Upabhoga. So Bhoktrutvam. Raga Dvesha presupposes Bhoktrutvam. So now the whole circuit is complete. We began with Bhoktrutvam that I experienced something because I must have done something. Kartrutvam must be there. That because there was a desire. That is because there was Raga Dvesha. And Raga Dvesha was there because there was a past experience. And so the earlier bhoktrutva brings about this bhoktrutva. Evam hetu hetu madbhavena pratyagatmani adhyasa pravaha anadihiti bhavaha. And so hetu hetu madbhavena. Kartrutvam becomes hetu for bhoktrutvam. Bhoktrutvam becomes hetu for again another kartrutvam. Each one becomes a hetu and hetu mat also. It is cause for what follows is in effect what, of what has preceded. And thus, this hetu hetu mat bhava. So if one thing is not hetu, and then the chain will be broken. That's a whole trick or a whole scheme of karma yoga. Sarva sankalpa sanyasi yoga arudasa uchyade. So sarva sankalpa sanyasi. Moment I break that chain of sankalpa, that I want something and I do not want, even though ragat dvesha is there, even then, I, when my mind says, I want something, no. I don't want something, no. Then that chain is broken. That's all they want to do. And that's how the karma loses the ability to bind me. Because once you get entrapped into a chain, then that's all right. You are all, you swept, you are swept under the current of this whole chain. But anyway, we find this whole chain occurring in all the common people. That shows that this is going on. Now, when was the first Kartrutvam? Or when was the first Bhoktrutvam? There cannot be a first Bhoktrutvam at all. Because Bhoktrutvam is an effect. So effect always calls for a cause. Except that the cause of Bhoktrutvam, which is Kartrutvam, also is an effect, which calls for a cause. And the cause for Kartrutvam, Ragadvesha, also is an effect, which calls for another cause. And Ragadvesha also is an effect, which calls for another cause, namely Bhoktrutvam. Since each one is an effect, even, even though each one is a cause, is also in turn an effect, therefore it is a bija ankura nyaya. That every ankura calls for a bija, and every bija or the seed calls for another ankura. So otherwise there cannot be a tree unless there was a seed, there could not be a seed unless there was a tree, and therefore this chain will go on how long? It will go on until what we call the beginningless time, anadi. There cannot be a first seed. Because where will it come from? It must have a, a tree or a plant to proceed. So there cannot be first anything. Who is the first father? Because every father has to be a son. And so otherwise he cannot be a so son, he must be. And no, every father is a son. And then again he is also a son. And thus any chain you take, 
or every t- disciple must be a, t- a t- teacher is also a disciple and he must have his own teacher and thus when we take any chain we find that ultimately it proves itself to be beginningless so we call God the first teacher and first father and first seed everything you know Bijamman Sarabhutanam Vidhipartha Sanatanam so somewhere the chain must end God says Lord says in me everything ends Sakashta Saparagati that's all right but in this Vyavara this whole chain goes on from the, up to the time beginningless and therefore we say that this Adhyasa Pravaha is beginningless and so Adhyasa all the Vyavara that I have the notion that I entertain today about my being an individual or whatever which notion has a cause in the past and that is this Pravaha is beginningless so Naisargika this is what was and some every time there is no time when such Adhyasa was not there at, one, at any time some Adhyasa or the other has always been there in fact they say that this Kala as Ratna Prabhakara says even this our, Kalasya Avartanam so Anyatamaya Vekta Vina Anadi Kalasya Avartanam even the Kala itself cannot be because time itself is, is nothing but a projection because in deep sleep when there is no projection there is no time and moment you wake up the mind becomes active then there is a concept of time so time itself is a product of Adhyasa of the Prakriti Desha so Maya Kalpi the Desha Kala Kalana Vaishitra Chitri Kritam this Desha and Kala itself is a product of Maya and therefore there cannot be a time when Adhyasa is not because time itself is a product of Adhyasa so there cannot be a, a, a time when the ornament when there cannot be ornament when there is no gold so when ornament is there gold must be there similarly also when even time is there Adhyasa must be there. So even the beginningless, that that concept itself is in time. I mean time itself is a product of Adhyasa, but obviously this Adhyasa is going on from, as we call it beginningless time. What is beginningless time? You only call it beginningless, then the time itself, the concept itself is not there. <coughs> it's ever there as far as we can think. It's, it goes beyond the ability of the mind to comprehend. That's all it means. So that was explained, the word Naisargika was explained this way. Mithya, Jnana, Mithya word was explained and instead of breaking that compound as Mithya and Jnanam, here the Tikagara chooses to explain it as Mithya, Ajnanam. Mithya, Chitat, Ajnanam, Chitat, Mithya, Ajnanam. That which is Mithya as well as Ajnanam. And then he explains, even though Vashyakara says, this Vyavahara is, this Adhyasa is Mithya Jnana Nimitta. Meaning that Mithya Jnana becomes a Nimitta for this Adhyasa. The Tikakara explains that not only it is Nimitta, but it is Upadana also. And thus Ajnana is considered to be the fundamental Upadana. So Ajnana, Ajnana se Upadana Tvevi Samsphurat Atma Tattva Avarakataya Doshatvena Ahankara Adhyasa Kartuhu Ishwarasya Upaditvena Samskara Kala Karmada Nimitta Parinamitvena Nimitta Tvami Dyodetum Nimitta Padam Page 36 Ajnanasya Upadana Tvepi So it is true that Ajnana means the Upadana, the material cause for everything. Then Samsphurat Atma Tattva Avaragataya Atma Tattva is what? Samsphurat means Swayam Prakasham Atma who is self-effulgent Even that self-effulgent Atma also is veiled by ignorance Because it is a veiling power Dosha Tvena So that is Dosha For example, this dream is a product of Dosha When my knowledge that I am a waker is veiled By what we call the sleep so because of nidra dosha, that is the product of what we call dream. So projection comes when first it is preceded by avaranam. So avaranam and vikshepa. Vikshepa always is the product of avaranam. Avaranam is tamas, vikshepa is rajas. And so this, therefore ajnanam is two aspects. One is avaranam, other is vikshepa. So first of all, that's how we always recognize any particular prakriya. 
that when do we project a snake where in fact there is a rope? First of all, the true nature of rope is veiled and then alone there is a scope for projection of the snake. So, samsvarat atma tattva avarakataya doshatvena First thing that happens is this avarnam that the true nature of the atma is veiled. Then, ahankara adhyasa then comes the adhyasa then comes the projection of ahankara the sense of individuality. I take myself to a limited being when? When I do not know the true nature of myself, which is limitless. And so first, not knowing the true nature of the self, then comes the, the error or adhyasa of taking myself to be ahankara. <coughs> and then comes the samskara. Samskara, kala karma nimitta. And for any adhyasa, there are different nimittas. For any error to take place, certain factors are called for, as we said yesterday, First is samskara, that we must have the past experience of a snake, then alone I will project a snake now. And kala, time also. And during daylight it doesn't happen, during pitch dark also it doesn't happen, in the twilight zone it happens. So a particular time also becomes a nimitta for that adhyasa to take place. Karma, some past action I must have performed, as a result of which something some experience of fear, etc., I must have to experience. This is how they will say. Any experience that takes place must have some cause behind, namely karma. You did it, so you suffer. So, whoever suffers, suffers on account of their own action. Anyway, but then I saw a snake and I was scared and whatever happened to me did happen. That must have some reason, namely karma. So, Nayaika recognize some general causes for any phenomenon to take place. Ishwara must be there. Desha must be there. Ka. Desha means a particular place must be there. And then place means so only in the garden or somewhere this kind of adhyasa can take place. You know, see, we are seeing rope as a snake, that also requires a certain place where there is a possibility of fear and stuff like that. So some desha is involved, some kala is involved, some karma is involved, and then some samskara is involved. All of this become what? Nimitta for the adhyasa to take place. Not upadhanam. What is upadhanam? Upadhanam is that which remains with the effect. Nimitta is that which causes the effect and then ceases to be there. So, therefore, desha, kala, etc., they do not remain anymore with the adhyasa of the snake. But ignorance of the rope continues to remain with the snake. And as long as the ignorance is, so long the snake remains. When the ignorance is destroyed, then snake also goes away. So by destruction of which, what goes away is called upadana karana. By destruction of the cotton, if the cloth is burnt, destroyed, then we say that cotton is the upadana karana or material cause of the cloth. By destruction of the clay, the pot is destroyed also, therefore we call clay the upadana karana. By destruction of the clay pot maker, the pot is not destroyed, so therefore it is nimitta karana. So, two causes are required for any phenomenon to take place. One is the upadana karanam, other is nimitta karanam. For the adhyasa, the various nimitta are required, desha, kala, karma, samskara, and different doshas. We said yesterday, chakshu dosha, pramana dosha, some prameya dosha, dosha associated with the rope itself, and then what, pramatra dosha, in me also, some fear, etc. Fearful nature is there. So, all of those also become the Nimitta for the Adhyasa to take place. But what is Upadhanam? Agnyanam is the Upadhanam. Because as long as ignorance is, the snake remains. Moment ignorance is destroyed, the snake also is destroyed. So Agnyanam is present here as Upadhana Karanam or the veiling is presented as the, the cause for the Adhyasa, the projection to take place. And therefore, however, all the Nimitta such as desha, kala, karma, samskara, all of these, however, are in turn products of avidya only. So, when avidya is upadana karanam, then alone desha, kala, all these things are also created, and therefore, avidya becomes also nimittam by way of creating all these various factors which are instrumental in creation of the rope. <coughs> so, directly ignorance becomes avidya, becomes upadanam, and indirectly, avidya becomes a nimittam. So avidya is both upadana and nimitta karana for the adhyasa. This is what this 
Sikagara wants to present or emphasize. And therefore, he interprets this expression, Mithya Jnana Nimittaha, as Mithya Jnana Upadhanascha, by Ajahal Lakshana. Then Nimitta Tattvam you retain, and then add one more word, Upadhan, which should be related to Nimitta. So, Nimitta is a cause, Upadhan also is a cause, and therefore it is related, and therefore, Nimitta Tattvam Iri Devutaitam Nimitta Padam. <coughs> Say for example, uh, Puran India says here, Mithya Jnana Upadana Haiti Bhakta De Sati Mithya Jnana Nimitta Haiti Upti Kimartha Haiti Atiha Adjnana Sati Ahankara Adhyasa Kartuhu Asmadadi Ahankara Adhyasa Kartuhu Ityartha Ahankara Adhyasa Kartuhu means an individual, you know, like us. Ida Upalakshanam Ishwarasya Sarvajagat Kartratvam Upadindina Nasambhava Devi Ishwarasya Kartratvali Upaditvena Ityartaha. So this Ajnana becomes Upadi for both the individual as well as Ishwara. For individual, what we call Jiva Srishti. For Ishwara, what we call Ishwara Srishti. So snake is Jiva Srishti and rope is Ishwara Srishti. So this snake which I perceive or project where the rope is, is strictly a creation of myself, of individual, is what we call a subjective creation, pratibhajika satta. And that snake is not available to anybody else. You may continue to see it as a rope and I see a snake. And look at the expressions are quite different, you know, there is all fear, all sorts of things on my face and you are quite calm and quiet because you don't see the snake, I see. So snake is a product of my individual, my, my own individual creation, subjective creation, pratibhadika sattva, and there also ignorance is called for. Rope also is a creation of Ishvara. So that is what we call objective creation, which means which is available for perception by everyone equally. But then also it is creation, and that creation also is possible only when Ishvara uses Maya as Upani. Earlier it was said that Maya and Avidya are one alone. And so, Avidya in the total sense is called Maya, in the individual, individual sense is called Avidya, or Prakruti in the total sense is called Maya, individual sense is called Avidya, and thus Avidya becomes Upadi for both its individual as well as Ishvara for their creations. So, that is how Adhyasa Kartuhu Ishvara Sacha, that's how it should be. Adhyasa Kartuhu means Asmadadi ahankara asmadadi ahankara adhyasa kartuhu Ishwarasya sarvajagat karatrutvam upadnamina nasambhava devi because Ishwara in the true nature is who? Nitya shuddha buddha mukta swahava ekameva advitiyam is Brahman and therefore Brahman itself cannot be creator of this. So Brahman, for Brahman to become creator, some upadhi is called for, which is what we call Maya. So Brahman or Ishwara with the upadhi of Maya alone becomes the Jagat Karta. And Satchidananda Atma also cannot be Karta. I also cannot project anything that Atma also becomes project the, the one who projects again on account of the upadhi of Avidya. So Avidya becomes Upadhanam, Upadhi for both Jiva as well as Ishwara for their individual creations. So Upadhi Tvena, that way also this avidya becomes instrumental in creation of the rope and the snake. <coughs> Samskara kala karmadini yana nimittani tat parinamitvena iti vigraha. Samskara kala karmadi nimitta parinamitvena. So samskara kala karma, which are all the nimitta, and avidya alone has transformed itself into the form of samskara kala karma, and thus it becomes nimitta. <coughs> Ajnanasya mayatvena upadhanatvam dosatvena ityadi trutiyatrena nimittatvam api asti iti jnapaitam nimittapadam indi bhavaha. Ajnanasya mayatvena upadhanatvam. That Ajnana has this projecting power. Maya means projecting power. You can say avidya means wearing power and maya means projecting power. In as much as ignorance has a projecting power, Therefore it becomes the upadana karanam. Ajnana se maya tven upadana tvam 
ದೋಷತ್ವೇನ ಇತ್ಯಾದಿ ತೃತೀಯ ತ್ರಯಣ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆ ವರ್ಕತ ದೋಷತ್ವೇನ ದೆನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಕಾಲ ಕರ್ಮಾದ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಪರಿಣಾಮಿತ್ವೇನ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಉಪಾಧಿತ್ವೇನ ಸೊ ಆವರಕತ ದೋಷತ್ವೇನ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಕಾಲ ಕರ್ಮಾದ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಪರಿಣಾಮಿತ್ವೇನ ಸೊ ಬೈ ದಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಆವರಕತ ದೋಷತ್ವೇನ ಪರಿಣಾಮಿತ್ವೇನ ಚ ನಿಮಿತ್ತತ್ವ ದೋಷತ್ವೇನ ಉಪಾಧಿತ್ವೇನ ಅಂಡ್ ಪರಿಣಾಮಿತ್ವೇನ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ತೃತೀಯ ತ್ರಯಂ ನಿಮಿತ್ತತ್ವ ಅಸ್ತಿ ಜ್ಞಾಪಯಿತ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಪದ ಭಾವ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ತೃತೀಯ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಯುನೋ ದಿ ಕಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಐದ ತೃತೀಯ ಅವರ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಪಂಚಮಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೋ ದಿ ಟೀಕಾ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ನಿಮಿತ್ತತ್ವ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಕರಣ ತೃತೀಯ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಕರಣ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಕೇಸ್ all right so the idea here is that mithya gnana nimitta means mithya gnana nimitta meaning mithya gnana nimitta upadanascha so mithya agnyanam becomes the nimittam as well as upadanam for this adhyasa <coughs> now purananda asks the question swaprakashe tamo rupa avidya katham asange ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಸಂಘ ಕಥಮ ಅಭಿಪ್ರೇತಿ ಆಹ ಸ್ವಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ರತ್ನ ಪ್ರಭಾ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ವಪ್ರಕಾಶಾತ್ಮನಿ ಅಸಂಗೆ ಕಥಂ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಸಂಘ ಇದೆ ಶಂಕಾ ನಿರಾಸಾರ್ಥ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾಪದ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಮೇ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ನಾ ಸ್ವಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಆತ್ಮನಿ ಆತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ವಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಫಲ್ಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಸಂಗೆ see now the two difficulties involved here when you associate ignorance with atma two difficulties are there ignorance of atma when you say you are associating showing what a relation ignorance of atma atma is ignorance that means what atma is associated with ignorance now association means sangha how can sangha or association be there in atma when atma is a sangha atma cannot be father son and anything similarly atma cannot be ignorance or anything and therefore the question is when atma is a sangha how can he be how can atma be associated with ignorance and secondly what is ignorance tamo rupa ignorance is of the nature of darkness atma is what swaprakasha hai self effulgent of the nature of light how can darkness exist where there is light so swaprakasha hai ತಮೋ ರೂಪ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಕಥಂ ಇಸ್ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿಚ್ ಯು ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಫಲ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಸೇ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಗ್ನರೆನ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆನ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಫಲ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಿ ಇಗ್ನರೆನ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಗ್ನರೆನ್ಸ್ ಒಬ್ಟೇನ್ ವೇರ್ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಅಂಡ್ even if suppose it can obtain how can there be any association of atma with ignorance because atma is asangaha how can there be an association of atma with ignorance asangehi avidyaya sangascha katham and you know, how can there be a vid- sangha or association of avidya with atma is asangaha these are the two questions it is shankara asartham if these two shanka questions are there therefore mithya padam so mithya agnyanam why is the word mithya used before agnyanam because first of all agnyanam is both upadana and nimitta that is inside and what is the nature of the ignorance mithya mithya means what anirvachaniya <coughs> that will come also mithya means anirvachaniya which cannot be categorized either as sat or asat whether avidya is real or a vidya is non existent none of that we can say for example this creation is creation there is it real we cannot say it is real because the creation is dismissed in deep sleep or creation is dismissed in knowledge and therefore we cannot call it real satyam is what abadhitam that which can never be dismissed the creation and ignorance also ignorance also gets destroyed in the wake of knowledge 
So that which can be destroyed in the wake of something else cannot be real. All right. But is it not existent? We cannot say the creation does not exist because we experience it. So satchet na badhyeta, asatchet na pratiyeta. If this creation were non-existent, we would not have experienced it. The fact that we experience means that it is not non-existent. We don't say it is there. So, just because we experience it, so we, we don't say it is there. We say that it is not non-existent. And since it is Bhada Yogyam, since it can be negated or dismissed, we cannot say that it is real. So, the reality is dismissed because there is a Bhada and the non-existence is existence because there is experience. So, you cannot categorize anything. Avidya, if you cannot categorize, the product of Avidya, creation also you cannot categorize. Anything in the world cannot be categorized. Therefore, Vedantins have a great tool in their hand. If you come and say that there is a problem, there is a problem. You can always immediately present a problem, you know, the other side. And if somebody says, I have no problem, you have all the problems. That also you can say. Just present the other side. Because it depends upon how you look at it. And just this is how they always treat people. Not to relieve them from all that burden, not for anything else. People get so excited, you know, about things. You just present the other side and like a big balloon, you prick and then it becomes flat and so also the problem just becomes flat. Kya baat hai? What does it matter? Suppose it happened this way, so what? Everybody has come with his own prarabdha, let them do what they are doing, you know. Then people are really... But if there is an irresponsible person who doesn't take any responsibility, why, why are you doing like this? You have given, you have done this, and so you are responsible, and then Dharma Shastra comes, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so Vyavahara, Dharma Shastra comes, and too much Dharma, then Paramahasa comes. And you feel as if this person doesn't believe in anything. But then the point is that each one has its own validity. Ideas, that should be no problem. And so moment a person gets burdened or something, then you have to present the other standpoint. Because that is how the nature of things is. You cannot say something is. Because if it is there, it should persist always. Nor can we say it is not because you will not experience it. And therefore, this is the nature of things. Because the very cause of Vidya is like that. And therefore, whatever is produced out of Vidya is going to be like that. And therefore, the Sajna is what? Mithya. Therefore, you can explain. In Mithya, anything is possible. And therefore, in Suprakasha Atma, this Samarupa Vidya also is possible. And a Sangha Atma, this Sangha of the Vidya also is possible because without having Sangha, there can be a notion of Sangha. What Avidya can do is create a notion of thing which is not there. A Ghatita Ghatana Patayasi, it can create something which is not there. True, there cannot be Sangha or association of ignorance in Atma, but then Avidya can create that. It is true that ignorance cannot obtain where Atma is, but still Avidya can do that. So that Mithya, ignorance, is capable of doing it. <coughs> Says Purananda Swaprakashe Drishtanda Sahita Anubhava Balad Asti Eva Vidya Na Swaprakasa Tvahani Abhi Anubhavasya Brahmatvad Bhavaha. His Anubhava is Brahmatva. Anubhavasya Brahmatvad. Anubhava is what? Brahmatmaka. And therefore, Swaprakashe Drishtanda Sahita Anubhava Bala. Our experience is that I am ignorant. Point is, aham agniha. I am ignorant. That is experience. And you cannot deny experience. You can say, no, no, you don't, don't experience it. No, I do. That I am ignorant, that is my experience. You know, that's what happens. It says, no, you are not unhappy, but I am. You know. <laughs> and so what do you do about it? You are not sad, but I am sad. And therefore, so similarly also, I am ignorant. Even if though Atma is Svaprakasha, self-effulgent of the nature of life, our experience nevertheless is that I am ignorant. And that our experience says, Dhrishtanda Saita Anuha Bala. That Anuha, Dhrishtanda will be also given. Oh, well, Ratnabra himself gives. Read further. Prachanda Martanda Mandale Peshaka Anuha Siddha Andhakaravat Aham Agnihaidi Anuva Siddham Agnyanam Durapahnavam. 
सिस प्रचंड मार्तंड मंडल है मार्तंड मीन सन मार्तन मंडल मीन सूर्य मंडल द ओर्ब ऑफ द सन एंड प्रचंड मीनिंग वॉट वेरी ब्राइट सो इवन वेन ड्यूरिंग द ब्रॉड डे लाइट when the sun is shining brilliantly at that time also if you ask an owl what does it say it says peshaka anubhava siddhandakarvat peshakah ulukah peshakam suluka in fact brighter the sun more blind that fellow is that's what it is because at very sunlight only the construction of the eyes being what they are that fellow cannot see anything in even to us also it happens when there is cataract then there is too bright light i can't see you know i'm blind there so the, the eyes of the the owl are they are blinded on account of the sunlight and so he says what there is darkness so this is drishtanta what is drishtanta that even in the self effulgent sun there can be darkness not because sun is not self effulgent but because there is some dosha with the person who claims darkness similarly also in the cell that's what so then this is drishtanta and then what is our experience aham agnyah id anubhava siddham that i am ignorant so even need to explain the experience also some drishtanta must be there otherwise nayayika will not be satisfied to explain anything an illustration must be there so i have the experience i am ignorant kuch drishtanta hai aapke paas they will always ask you to prove anything you must have an illustration you know Yes, we have this standard. Prachanda Martanda Mandale Pechaka Anubhava Siddha Anthakarvata That is the standard. Aham Agnyahiti Anubhava Siddha Agnyanam So that Agnyanam is Anubhava Siddha I am ignorant. Therefore in I there is ignorant. There is Anubhava Siddha. Can there be such a thing? Yes. Just as in the bright sun also there is darkness from the standpoint of the owl. वैर पूर्णान स्वप्रकाशे दृष्टांत सहित अनुभव बला इन सन हुई स्व प्रकाश अनुभव सहित दृष्टांत सिमिलर आत्मा हुई स्व प्रकाश देर इज एन एक्सपीरियंस दर आई एम इग्नरेंट सिमिलर टू ए नाउल फी एक्सपीरियंसिंग डार्कनेस इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ सन एंड देर फर अस्थि अविद्या देर फर वी हैव टू एक्सेप्ट दैट देर इज इग्नरेंस इन द सेल्फ न स्व प्रकाश तो हानि अभी But what's the nature of the avidya? Mithya. And therefore, even though the owl claims darkness, that does not in any way damage the self-evolvence of the sun. Even though there may be 100 owls, all of them claiming it is darkness, that also does not damage the self-evolvence of the sun. And similarly also, so majority does not make truth, they say, you know. Similarly, everybody will say, there will be 5 billion people on this earth saying that I am ignorant. Still, that does not damage the self-effulgence of Atma. There should be only one person to say that, I am, I am wise. That's enough. So that one is enough. The whole earth, the whole world says, the sun rises and sun sets. But then you require only one scientist to say that, it is the sun that is stationary and the earth is moving. And that makes, that, that is real, that is true. so idea is that even my experience that i am ignorant does not damage or affect the self effulgence of atma why anubhavasya bhramatvat because that is an anubhava which is of the nature of bhrama or error there is ignorance no doubt where is that ignorance in the intellect which is superimposed where upon i and therefore there is a bhrama and error being committed it's an erroneous conclusion but the, the effect is the same whether it's an error or whether it is true the effect is the same whether it's a true snake or a, a erroneous snake effect is the same i am scared in the same way and so so whether i am really ignorant or not the effect is the same however this experience on my part then i am ignorant is what bhramatmakah is is an erroneous experience it's a delusion erroneous experience and therefore that does not in any way damage the self effulgence of atma however the experience is that that proves that there is ignorance associated with atma <coughs> okay so so prakash atmani avidya tamo rupa avidya asti even the atma is self effulgent this avidya is there how 
పేచక అనుభవ సిద్ధాంతకారవత్ దైవికం దృష్టాంత అనుభవస్య మిథ్యాత్వ దాల్సో దట్ ది హేతు దెన్ ద్వితీయ శంఖం పరిహర్తి దెన్ క్వశ్చన్ వాజ్ ద ఆత్మ ఇస్ అసంగ అన్కనెక్టెడ్ హౌ కెన్ ఆత్మ బి కనెక్టెడ్ విత్ ఇగ్నరెన్స్ ఆల్ రైట్ సపోజ్ దర్ ఇస్ ఇగ్నరెన్స్ బట్ వై షుడ్ ఐ కాల్ ఇట్ మై ఇగ్నరెన్స్ లెట్ ఎస్ సే దట్ ది ప్రెజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇగ్నరెన్స్ ఇన్ సెల్ఫ్ ఇవ్వలేదు ఆత్మ కెన్ బి ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ బట్ దెర్ ఐ కాల్ ఇట్ మై ఇగ్నరెన్స్ ఐ ఎమ్ ఇగ్నరెన్స్ హౌ డస్ దట్ హ్యాపన్ సో సే కల్పితధిష్ఠాన అస్పర్శిత్వాత్ నిత్యస్వరూప జ్ఞాస అవిరోధిత్వాచ్చ టూ హేతూస్ దేర్ ఆల్సో కల్పితధిష్ఠాన అస్పర్శిత్వా కల్పితధిష్ఠానేన సహ వాస్తవిక సంబంధ రహితత్వాత్ ఇత్యర్థ దాట్ ఈస్ కల్పిత ఆర్ సూపర్ ఇంపోజ్ లైక్ స్నేక్ ఈజ్ ఇన్ నో వే కనెక్టెడ్ విత్ ద రో ఈవెన్ దో వే కాల్ ఇట్ రోప్ స్నేక్ but then that snake has no relation whatever with the rope because what is kalpitam or what is superimposed does not in any way damage or influence the adhisthanam or the substratum kalpitasya adhisthana asparshitva the snake does not in any way touch the rope that sea of the mirage water does not wet even a grain of sand and so also this notion on my part that i am ignorant does not in any way make the atma ignorant నిత్యస్వరూపజ్ఞానస్యవిరోధిత్వాధ్యాసికత్వాత్స్తేవాస్తవికత్వాధ్యాసికత్వాత్సంబంధాసికత్వాత్సంబంధాసికత్వాత్
तो नित्य स्वरूप से नित्य स्वरूप ज्ञान से अविरोधित अनित्य स्वरूप ज्ञानम इज अपोज टू अविद्या और ज्ञानम न नित्य स्वरूप ज्ञानम सर वृत्ति ज्ञानम वृत्तारूढ़ ज्ञानम अहम ब्रह्म दैट बिकम्स वॉट दैट सेम ब्रह्म मस्ट डू मस्ट बिकम आरूढ़ इन वृत्ति दैट्स वॉट बिकम अवतरण ब्रह्मन मस्ट कम डाउन टू द लेवल ऑफ वृत्ति मीनिंग ब्रह्मन मस्ट टेक अवतार जस्ट एज लॉर्ड टेक अवतार एंड कम्स डाउन इन ह्यूमन फॉर्म सो ऑल्सो अगेन सेम लॉर्ड मस्ट टेक अवतार एंड कम डाउन इन माई वृत्ति एंड इनलिमिन दैट वृत्ति और रिविल द फैक्ट दैट आई एम ब्रह्म इट इज दैट वृत्ति और वॉट टू कॉल वृत्ति ज्ञानम दैट इज अपोज टू इग्न अहम अग्न बिकॉज अहम अग्न इज वृत्ति रूपम एंड सो अहम ब्रह्म ऑल्सो इज वृत्ति रूपम एंड दैट इज अपोज मीनिंग दैट दी जनरल नॉलेज इज नॉट अपोज टू एनिथिंग दी वॉट टू कॉल सामान्य ज्ञान इज नॉट अपोज टू एनिथिंग विशेष ज्ञान इज अपोज अदरवाइज इन डीप स्लीप ऑल्सो there is only ignorance and atma then if they are opposed there will be no sleep at all but in deep sleep the atma eliminates ignorance also what is the opposed to deep sleep is i am awake it is that vritti that is opposed and not atma <coughs> so the idea is just as electricity is not opposed to darkness when electricity manifests itself through the bulb so that is called vrittyarudha chaitanyam Electricity, when it becomes arud in the bulb filament, then alone it opposes to. It is opposed to darkness. Electricity per se is not opposed to darkness. For example, in the wood, every piece of wood, the fire is present, but that is not opposed to cold. Only when the fire gets manifest in the form of this flame, then alone it is opposed to cold. And so the the samanya. Similarly, also atma is the nature of jnana. All right, but that is what we call. सामान्य ज्ञानम नित्य स्वरूप ज्ञानम दैट इज नॉट अपोज टू इग्नरेंस ओनली वेन दैट गैट रिफ्लेक्टेड इन वृत्ति देर नो इट गैट इट इज अपोज टू इग्नरेंस देर फॉर टू एलिमिनेट इग्नरेंस दैट वृत्ति ज्ञानम दैट रिकग्निशन मस्ट बी दैट इट इज नॉट इनफ दैट आई मीन आई एम आई एम लिमिटलेस दैर मस्ट बी रिकग्निशन दैट आई एम लिमिटलेस इज नॉट इनफ दैट आई एम ब्रह्म दैर मस्ट बी रिकग्निशन दैट आई एम ब्रह्म देन लोन माई जीवत फॉर गोज अदरवाइज इट इज नॉट गो अथवा ज्ञान ज्ञान यो विरोधा कथम ज्ञान रूप आत्मनि अज्ञान ज्ञान रूप आत्मनि अज्ञान नित्य सेम थिंग दैट आत्मा इज वॉट नित्य स्वरूप ज्ञान एंड दैट इज नॉट अपोज टू इग्नरेंस सो मिथ्यापद मिथ्या चत अज्ञान च मिथ्या अज्ञान सो मिथ्या अज्ञान निमित्त so agnyanam is presented as nimitta and upadana karana for the abhyasa and that agnyanam is how mithya and therefore it does not in any way affect the svaprakashatvam as well as asangatvam of atma so ignorance can be there even though atma is of the nature of light and i ignorance of atma can be there even though atma is asangah because that ignorance is mithya that experience that our notion that we have is mithya <coughs> this is one vyakhyanam given by ratna prabhakara for the expression mithya agnyanam now he gives another vyakhya of mithya agnyanam says on the page 31 yadva agnyanam gnana abhava iti shanka nirasartham mithya padam सो दिस इज तारक निराशार्थम निराशारा निराशारा निराशार्थम मिथ्यापदम दिस तार्किक नैयायिका से दैट वॉट इज अज्ञान अज्ञान इज ज्ञान राहित्यम और ज्ञान अभाव अज्ञान अज्ञान बिफोर ज्ञान विह दिस नम नई मीन्स अ दट अ हेज सेवरल मीनिंग सिक्स मीनिंग इट एज इन फैक्ट वन ऑफ दम इज अभाव a stands for abhava so agnyanam can be gnyan abhava also is virodhi gnyan virodhi agnyanam also is in sense of alpa also is in sense of so uh, akala uh, akala means so, so wrong kala or or a is in sense of dushtatvam dosha so this dosha is there aputra means what 
सो इट इज नॉट एब्सेंस ऑफ ए पर्सन बट इट इज पर्सन हुई डजेंट हैव सन अब ब्राह्मण है फेलो हु इज नॉट ए ब्राह्मण बट लुक्स लाइक ब्राह्मण देर ऑल्सो अब ब्राह्मण है अकाल है That akal is not absence of time. Akal is the wrong time. Akal amrutti means at wrong time. So a can mean wrong. A can means false. A can means opposed. Dharma a dharma. A dharma is what opposed to dharma. And in this case, bhava and a bhava. That a is opposed to bhava or absence. So a can mean absence. A can mean opposition. A can mean dosha. A can mean mitya, or A can also mean uh, what? Alpatvam sometimes. Ahimsa can be alpahimsa. Because you cannot have practically in the vyavahara, at the physical level, ahimsa is impossible, and so we call it alpahimsa. So A also means alpa. So all these different meanings are there for this, this uh, nai, that is negative particle A. So when we say avidya or agnyanam, What should the meaning? Nayayika say that Agnyana means Gnyana Abhava. Which is true in Vyavahara. When I say that I am ignorant of French language, that means that I just do not, I, there is an absence of the knowledge of French language. I am ignorant of where Timbakatu is, that means there is an absence of knowledge of Timbakatu. And therefore, normally it is true that Agnyana means Gnyana Abhava, absence of knowledge. But here, In this case, Agnyanam is not Gnana Bhava. With reference to Atma, ignorance of Atma is not Gnana Bhava. Because I am not totally ignorant of Atma. Therefore, this Agnyanam is a peculiar Agnyanam. If I totally did not know Atma, there would be no problem. In deep sleep, there is no knowledge of Atma. 